All right, this is absolutely stunning, stunning. Scientists from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey have released a comprehensive analysis of the largest three-dimensional map of the universe ever created. Three-dimensional, what do you see? Do you know what I say? Every time things interact, they glow. What do you see there, my friends? I see glow, and where do I see it? I see it surrounding the nucleus of an atom. Oh, oh, oh an atom, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That, I think, is the center of a galaxy, perhaps. But look at the little different colors, that's amazing. And then look at the region it appears to control, because as I say, light is pushed to shove. Now, this is more lit up, as obviously we can see, than like a, a region that's just sort of freely pushing. Now, they seem to lock into each other, and in a molecule, if these were molecules, and they may be, in a sense, the core would look different, which it does in these, depending upon what type of an atom it was. Now, we all know that atoms have this, these different numbers of what they call protons and neutrons. Well, I call them, they're all electrons. And that is electron flood theory, shown it a million times, probably here. These are those. All of these things out here are all of these things. Now, this is the region that this one controls. It's surrounding itself, basically the same thing. And these are strong and weak forces. But when they smack into their same regions, they start to glow, just as I showed with the laser experiment Rod and I do. Once they smack into each other and they have to force into that, they glow. In this case, they're forcing out and pushing into each other's fields, and they glow. And this is the, our universe, 3D map of the universe. Now, they're using this to say, oh, this is why we're ex expanding apart. We're not expanding apart. Light is slowing down as it comes to us. I've shown it speed up and I've shown it slow down. It's not in question any longer. Now, this needs, see all the blue ones? See the blue ones? Where they, blue is a more concussive value. And they seem to get collected in these regions that are strongest reactive. That's what I'm saying. Now, this I think they got completely wrong. This is redshift means they're longer frequency. They don't impact quite as hard. When they're spinning faster, the, the impact is more energetic and they start to go brighter and brighter and brighter until you get to the real explosive impact. Now, why do they think this is proves the universe is expanding. I see the light slowing down, really. Now, where are we? Are we here? Are we the center of the universe? I don't know. They don't make this very, very obvious what's going on here. Uh, if we are here, well, that, that means we're the center of the universe. That's pretty nice. Where are we? Je ne sais pas. But I see light slowing down. Now, there's, I don't know how they're coming up with this, but right now they're saying it's, everything's going away so fast it exceeds the speed of light. And then they say, well, yeah, but we can sort of account for that by doing some trickiness there. But it's just not right. They come up with a solution for everything by some... I, I took in uh, college, I took uh, lying with statistics. And basically that's what they'll say. I mean, nobody can... That's just obviously not correct. And how would it all bang up from nothing? There's nothing in the first place. And then congeal all into everything that we see in human life. And oh, I mean, come on, come on, come on. Okay, my very, very, very good chemically 
intelligent friends. Now, don't freak out on me. This is going to be very simple. And what it will illustrate to you will be off the charts. Unbelievable. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the universe, obviously. And what is the universe that I'm talking about? I'm talking about the universe that a hydrogen atom thinks is the universe. You say, well, Roger, that doesn't make any sense at all. Well, as above, so below. And you say, well, what does that mean? I say, when I show you what our universe looks like, you will understand exactly what an atom and what a nucleus looks like. Because you understand electron flood theory, where everything collects of electrons, and they ball together, and then they control a certain region. And then there'll be another one over there that will interact with that region, and another one here, and another one here. They collect up. But what I'm just showing here is a helium atom. All right, we think of it as four, well, two protons, two neutrons. Well, it's not. It's 7,350 electrons. 7,350. There's black balls and then there's white balls. And the strong force is the white balls. The black force is the weak balls, or the weak force. And they just, they never do anything other than stay like a ball. When these interact, the strong force, they glow like this. This is interacting. Boom! The black ball just rolls away. Now, when they're coming through the air, they're in this configuration, a photon, back to back, which is an electron. This is an electron at rest. And when you say, well, what does that mean, at rest? Well, there's all kinds of extra electrons everywhere. They're all over the place. And the hotter it gets, the more are forced into that region. That's all heat is, is extra electrons. And they take up a, a round distance. And when they push on each other, they glow. And when they glow, that's heat. Wait till I show you this. It is going to freak you out. Get the kids. Now, what am I going to show you? I am going to show you molecules that are the size of, I believe, galaxies. And what do they do? They control a region exactly like this, which is a magnetic region around itself. Exactly like a hydrogen. Now, that hydrogen is not one just gigantic positive and one tiny little negative. That is uh, 1837 or 1838 or 1839, somewhere around there, electrons. And that is enough to make it stable and keep one off to the side as it's, it's, so, it's got enough electrical activity, magnetism, range that it controls that it will flip electrons that are this far away from a 21 centimeters. That's enormous. It's gigantic. They, and then when you force them down into the Venturi, like Rod and I are doing, the weak force, here, this is the Venturi. And here's what we did. And Rod came up with this. Just an accidental discovery, which is the way things usually work. He's got a red laser. He's pulsing. And he, he uses a couple of literally nails. I don't know what size they were. But he puts them together to make, a, to make a, a slit, not realizing that he has forced this to become a Venturi. Because not only do they have to just poke through that slot, they have to force themselves into that slot. Because they are coming through literally like this. They are like this. And then as they approach that Venturi, <laughs> They go flying through just like the, a, a hose. When they come out the other side, there is the, the separation of the black balls and the white balls, and they just explode. Photons are like this, and they are only like that until they hit the Venturi. At the Venturi, they separate into electrons, which is just a positive and a negative, and, and then to get through that Venturi and force into each other's white regions, which is, I'm showing in red. But when they do that, the white ones explode, absolutely explode, as you saw or will see. 
and then the black ones just roll away. They roll away, roll all the way around the edges. That is exactly what they're looking for. Bosons, fermions, muons, electron neutrinos, call them what you will. And they control an enormous region, and electron flood theory is the new way it works. Electrons at rest are just sitting here. They're in the median. There's no push to shove. Everybody's the same temperature. As soon as you introduce something that is a different temperature, or you shine light, or you turn on electricity, or light comes through the window, or a new person walks in the room, everything changes. Everything changes. It it's either gets warmer or it gets colder. Sometimes the pressure in the room gets stopped and some gets lower. There's all kinds of different interactions with molecules that were never thought of before because they, well, forget about all that stuff. It's, it's got to be thought of in a different way.